Today I want to take us on a little culinary trip to the Caribbean. Um, John and I have never been and we want to go one day really soon. And we want to take the whole family with us so we all got to get everybody's passports and everything. But uh, we want to snorkel and scuba dive and just experience. It looks like it's paradise already down there, doesn't it? I know. So anyway, but we can eat like down there. We sure can with all the flavors anyway. This is something that I found years ago when I used to watch Food Network all the time when my boys were little. And it's Caribbean flavored chicken and then rice. And John, the first time he had it, he said, baby, this is just like your chicken and rice except all souped up or all jacked up or all hopped up. He's always talking that car talk, you know, so. And it is, it's full of flavor and y'all are gonna love it. And it's in a slow cooker. Sometimes I cook it in the oven, but it's so hot this time of the year. We're going to do it in the slow cooker. And I'm coating my slow cooker with nonstick cooking spray. Yes, I am. Um, because I think one time I read that the electricity you use on a slow cooker is only like seven cents for the whole day. So that's amazing. Probably gone up a little bit since then, but that's still good. And it doesn't get your kitchen hot when it's real hot summertime. Plus, the kids are about to start back to school, and I remember putting everything in the crock pot and going off for the day. Today, I've got lots of errands to run, so I'm going to use my crock pot and let it cook for me. But I love walking in the house at the end of the day when you're tired, and it just smells like someone else has been in your kitchen cooking for you. And isn't that a comforting smell? It is, I know. So I love crock pot cooking. I really do, and it's so very good. Um, I'm going to bring y'all down here to show y'all how to put this Caribbean chicken together. Let me let me move all of y'all down here. I know y'all like to see stuff. Let's start scooting everybody. Pick y'all all up. Uh, first thing we're going to put is one cup of chopped onion. And I did that before I got home here with y'all. We put that right in the bottom. And then the next thing is one cup of chopped carrots. And I put them in slices. Y'all see that? You can chop them up small, small. And y'all, I promise you, this cooks so low and slow that all these kind of just melt in there and sort of make a sauce, okay? And then one cup of celery. That was a little more than a cup, so I won't pour it all. And y'all see, we're just lying in the bottom there. I think y'all need to be a little closer, don't you, over here on YouTube. I do too. I get it. I see it. Y'all just hang in there. I know. I need me a camera crew, don't I? I <laughs> just can't afford one. All right, y'all. To this, we have got four pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. And I lay these right here on top. I do, I do. I've got lots of errands to run today. I don't have my little kids with me, but I've still got lots of errands to run. And used to, when I went off to work and came in, you can enjoy all this. So it's good for any of us, young mothers, older mothers, all of us. The mothers that don't want to be in a hot kitchen during the summer, right? And fathers, not just mothers, but fathers. Okay, guys. On to this, I am going to salt and pepper my chicken. And y'all know we didn't salt and pepper any of those veggies, so we want to put plenty of salt and pepper. However much you like to do is what you need to do, right? And then pepper. Just like that. Okay, now I'm going to move y'all just a little bit over here to my bowl. Move y'all there to this bowl. We're going to make a mixture to pour on top of our chicken. So, first thing we need is a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. And let's see, the I think it's 423 grams of tomato sauce. But y'all get it, don't you? I know you do. I know you do. That's the first thing we're going to make. There we go. Get all of you in there, buddy. All your goody. Alright, and to that, we're going to add, y'all know I love these chopped chipotle 
um, peppers and all this is is smoked jalapenos in a tomatoey garlicky um, pickling sauce and it's they're so very good and they've even got a little bit of a smoky flavor and I found these already chopped but if you can't find the pre-chopped you just get your little can and you chop them up okay and we're gonna need a, a tablespoon of that and y'all see I'm always generous with my measurements that's a generous tablespoon isn't it? all right and now I've already got pre-chopped garlic because we're doing a fast quick meal you can do two cloves of chopped garlic or you can do about two teaspoons of this pre-chopped garlic which I love it's a quick quick fast thing and then the juice of one lime and I already sliced my lime before I got on here with y'all there we go y'all see all these Caribbean flavors y'all see how flavorful this chicken is gonna be it's just fabulous alright y'all and I'm just whisking this around to get it all mixed there together and now we are going to pour it onto our chicken let me move everybody back around here for us there we go right onto our chicken it goes and just make sure you cover all your chicken there all we have to do simply is cover this and you can turn it on low for six to eight hours which is what I'm going to do today and if you're not going to be gone that long you can turn it on high for three to four hours and when I get back today I'll get back on here with y'all and we're gonna make rice and peas to go with this because it is chicken and rice right hey y'all it has been several hours and I'm back and um, John's not home yet still y'all see it's still daylight but I thought we'd go on and do our rice and peas so then I'd be ready and I'd get cleaned up for him to be here with me. First thing I need is a 15 and a half ounce can of red beans. And these I get, and they literally say red beans, okay? Um, this is called rice and peas, Jamaican rice and peas. And I know that this is beans, but that's their name. And this is their recipe. So guess what? We're going to call it rice and peas, aren't we? It's still good, however you look at it. I need to drain these red beans, though. And if you can't find red beans in a can, I have had to use kidney beans before, so you could do that as well. You sure could. Um, I'm letting those drain. So into a pot, I'm trying to get everything in the camera here with us, I need one cup of water going in. And then I'm going to put one cup of this instant rice, which I love dearly for this. And this is the recipe. It called for that. And I'm always generous with my cup of rice. Um, I just like how it cooks up better like that. Does that make sense to y'all? Y'all know what I mean. I had me a stirrer that would not scratch the bottom of my... What did I do with it, Amy? Come on, girl. You lost it from yourself. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yes. I've got me a stir that won't scratch the bottom of my um, non-stick cooking pan. Alright. And to the cup of water and the cup of instant rice, we're going to add some unsweetened coconut milk. And don't think that it makes it taste like coconut, okay? It doesn't. My, my redneck country boy husband... He likes it, and he would he would turn his nose up to some coconut milk and rice, but it's very good. All it does is make it creamy, okay? I promise. So at least try it one time. If John, if Country Boy John eat it, I know, I know y'all's Country Boys will too. And I'm gonna add that whole can. Let me see how big that is. It's about a 15 ounce can as well. But y'all know I'll put that in the recipe. Yes, I will. And we do need to add a pinch of salt, just like that, just a pinch of salt, nothing major. I'm going to add some black pepper. And then one teaspoon of dried thyme. And the recipe called for dried thyme, so that's what, that's what I always put. And it's so good, so very good. There we go. 
and now into that our beans look good and drained let me put that over in there we're going to bring all this to the boil guys the only other thing we need to put in here right now is this lime zest and lime juice and I'm going to finish zesting my lime one of you told me that you don't do any kind of zest because it tastes bitter to you and so I thought well I need to talk about zesting again because when you zest you do one scrape on your zester and you don't get it down to the white you only take off the color part okay and it's not bitter like that if you scrape too deeply into that white part that's when you get bitter so so be careful scrape and turn scrape and turn scrape and turn <laughs> that's what I do all right I'm gonna put my lime zest in there just like that give this a stir you come to a boil a boil BTB bring to boil huh and we also are going to put this lime juice in there my juicer I didn't bring over here either but he's he's nice and soft and I'll just squeeze him in there just like that yes so nice I'm going to stir it one more time. I cannot explain to y'all how wonderful this tastes. Y'all have got to make this. Um, Jamaican rice is what I like to call it. I saw this recipe years ago on Food Network um, made by Robin Miller. And she cooks a lot in crock pots. And she'll do one big meal and then make a couple of different meals during the week. And I used to love to watch her when my boys were little because she was good about doing that you make one big thing one time and then you can use something else use it to make something else in the week so i really loved her and she cooked a lot in a slow cooker so i loved everything about her i did and this is where i got her recipe years ago and it's so very good or that's where i saw it um and last year guys uh I had Stephanie, my friend Stephanie, she's our local librarian, Union Parish Library librarian, and she called me and asked me, did I happen to have, she's, she's in a book club, and each time they get together for their book club, they um, read, of course, and they discuss the book, and then they also will eat something, and they like it to be themed like what they're reading, and they were reading a book that was set in the Caribbean. So she called me and she said, do you happen to have a recipe that you can make for us that is Caribbean flavors? And I said, I, matter of fact, I do, I do. So it was really exciting. I got to go to the library and I got to cook. And that was the first time I actually had a live audience out there. So that was different for me. And she also filmed me too and put it on the library website. Um, but I was really nervous. Oh my goodness, I was nervous. It just made it all together different, you know, even though I've been on here with y'all so much. So that was exciting. And so I actually made this and shared it on there. And that was just fun little experience I had with this Caribbean meal. Um, this comes to a boil and then you cover it. But I covered it so maybe it would come to a boil quicker. Yes, it did. Now I'm going to turn it way down on low, guys not off but on low just on about one I'm, I've got my little cooktop here so we could stay together I know y'all see that I moved around in the kitchen when I'm standing at the um, kitchen window it seems like the Sun is just beating on back on me and kind of flooding y'all out you know and so and I've got light shining on us this way but it still seems like you know the Sun's the most powerful light so I said well let's move around a little bit because we're in crock pots and this little hot plate so we don't have to be over there so that's what I did today um, the only other thing after this sits and lets all that rice absorb all that moisture that's all you're waiting on so it's about five minutes only and as soon as that happens I'm going to open it up and I'm going to fold in about a quarter cup of chopped green onions and that's it and it is ready to go with our Caribbean chicken yes it is um, I'll come back on here in a few minutes and we'll look at it 
Now I got right off here and I, I thought I just put one cup of rice. It's two cups of rice. So don't write it down yet. Now I'll write down two cups of rice. Ah, oh, sometimes I think I need a new brain, guys. I get on here with y'all and um, I'm not paying as much attention, but that's okay. It's an easy, easy little fix because we just got that started. Now I'll see y'all back in about five minutes. Look who drove up. I tell you, you do have a, a sixth sense about you, baby, because I told him five more minutes when that rice absorbed all its liquid. Yeah. And you came I driving up. up. You did. <laughs> um, so I thought we'd fix the plate, show everybody how we're going to eat this later. Okay. You, you and me's going to sit on the porch a little while, yes, huh? Yes, yes. Watch the sun go down. Yeah. But anyway, guys, I want to get y'all over here and let y'all see the um, Caribbean chicken. Let me get everybody here. Y'all can see it pretty good. Let me get all the YouTubers over here. Everybody wants to see this Caribbean chicken. I told them that you said it was just like chicken and rice, but all souped up, baby. Mm -hmm. All hopped up. You were doing race car talk, weren't yeah. you? Oh, isn't that beautiful? Yes. So, so pretty. Look at there. Yum. Mm -hmm. Yum. What'd you say when you came in? We're going to eat good again tonight, yeah, baby? We're going to eat good again tonight. <laughs> All right, I'm going to scoot us back, and let's see. Wait till I can find you without your head chopped off, John. John, we don't want to chop your head off, do we, baby? Not yet. Not yet? Okay. Not yet. All right, darling. Oh. Everybody's been missing you, you know it. Have you? you came home a little <laughs> earlier tonight. It's yes, not I quite did. dark. It's not quite dark yet. <laughs> <laughs> Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for this day, for watching after us, Lord, keeping us safe. Lord, thank you for this meal. My wife, the blessing that she is, Lord. Lord, I just ask you just continue to keep your hand upon us, Lord. Just keep us safe from the devil from us. Lord, please be with the people in our prayers. Be with our nation. We love you so much, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Okay, y'all. This is how this is how we're gonna eat it later, baby. Y'all yeah. haven't even got to see the rice yet, have you? Oh my goodness! Everybody's gonna be excited. I want to show y'all just in literally in five minutes it absorbed. Let me come show y'all. Can y'all see these rice and peas? Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> you remember what this tastes like, don't I you, do. baby? I do. You sure do, mm -hmm. darling. Mm -hmm. And I told everybody that you're my redneck country boy, and if you liked rice cooked in coconut milk, that they would too, right? Yeah, indeed. That's good. <laughs> it is. It really good. is. It's very, um, it's almost velvety, isn't it? It's mm. creamy and very luxurious, yeah. I guess. Try not to top it. You see how I balance I stuff do. up here? One day it's going to be a calamity, isn't it? It's a sample. Yeah, this will be our sample. Be our sampler, yeah. Put another scoop or two on there. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao, Mary. All right, y'all. Get one of these beautiful little chicken thighs out and put him on here. He's supposed to be in the middle. Stay in the middle, buddy. And then all those vegetables. I'll put a few of those, too. Just so we can see them. <clears throat> and now some things that you put on top is a squeeze of lime. Just like that. I'm going to put it to the side for our picture. He's got to go for a photo shoot, doesn't he? Yep. And cilantro. Chop cilantro. If you like it. If you don't, you don't have to do it. And then I like some avocado pieces with it. And I know John Murray does not, so I'm just going to do me a couple over here. I'll put some on one side, baby, on our sampler. All right, darling. Let me, go, let me show mm -hmm. everybody how beautiful... Can y'all see how good this looks? Yum. Ooh, and it is very flavorful, isn't it, darling? Yeah. There you go, baby. Cheers. 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 This little piece of that chicken off. Ooh, that thigh's just falling apart, it's isn't it, darling? Apart. It is. Yes, it is. And it is hot. Hot, hot, hot.
about a mm. hundred more just like that, I'll be ready for a nap. <laughs> mm. Mm. That's good. It is good. Okay, guys, we're going to get off here and go watch sunset and the cows. The cows are across the road. We get to watch the sun setting on them, don't we? Yeah. I hope everybody has a good rest of the week. I do, I do. And we'll see y'all later. Y'all, John came in, got me all flustered. I didn't fold in our green onions into our rice. <laughs> I had to add a cup of rice earlier. I need to go home and start all over, don't I? Now, doesn't that make it a lot prettier with that green in there? That little pop of green? Yes, it does. But that's okay. We hadn't really eaten. We were just practicing before, weren't we, baby? That's right. That was just a practice run. Practice. Yeah. yeah. So now, now, guys. Okay, now, be sure to put that in there. Don't get all flustered like, like me. <laughs> okay, this time, I'm really leaving. Hey y'all, um, before I leave out today and run and do all my errands, I wanted to talk to y'all a little bit. Um, I have many of you ask me, because I talk about I read my Bible and drink my coffee in the morning, and a lot of you have asked me, what do I read or what's my devotion or things of that nature or do I have a devotional book? I don't have one right now, okay? Um, I just haven't. Uh, a lot of times like when I'm going into church, I would pick one up. I just haven't done that recently. But um, I, what I'm doing right now, and I have been for several months now, and I thought I'd just share it with y'all. See, y'all see how crazy my little brain is. But um, it's something that just comes to my heart, or something that I'm wondering about that I might look up. And I was speaking with my daddy yesterday on the phone, and we were talking about prayer warriors. That's all you see on Facebook, you know, calling all prayer warriors. And I. It, it got me to thinking, and I've even asked y'all, you know, I need all my prayer warriors out there to um, to pray for my mama and that we're trying to get her some help and things of that nature for uh, some physical therapy. And I, it, it made me get to thinking, like self-reflecting on myself, am I a prayer warrior? You know, wow, that is a bold statement, isn't it? Um, it truly is. And so, first thing I do in the morning is I read a chapter out of the uh, Old Testament, and then I'll read a chapter out of the New Testament, and I'll stay in a book. Like right now, I'm reading, I've got my stuff marked, so I'll just tell y'all. Right now, I'm reading in 1 Samuel, and this is when... Um, all the Israelites decided they wanted a king like everybody else. And I love all these old books like that. It's almost like you're reading a drama. <laughs> it really is. So I read a um, chapter in there. And then I flipped over. And we're in James on Wednesday night at church. We had to cancel Wednesday night church because of COVID again. It's so um, discouraging. But that's okay. That's okay. It just is harder times, and that makes us dig deeper and push harder, right? But I was reading a chapter in James this morning, too. And then I do a little something. I might want to look something up that I read. But my thing this morning was that I was talking with my daddy yesterday, and, you know, you see that a lot. You know, prayer warriors, prayer warriors. And I thought, yeah, I just used that term. And I thought, well, Amy, you know, are you a prayer warrior? And I... I got to looking up things. I just started looking up words about prayer warrior. And my goodness, a warrior is an experienced, seasoned soldier, right? And I felt very short of that term. I felt like I, I was falling very short of that. And um, so it made me reflect about my prayer life and how much more I could improve it. Um, and it's real easy for us to just be scrolling Facebook and when you see that say, yeah, I'm sending prayers out, but do I really get on my knees? Do I really bow my head and close my eyes and do I really pray or do I just say that and scroll on? And many times I've said that meaning well, but then I've never thought about it again because of my busy life. 
and so it got me saying Amy you really need to look back at yourself look in the mirror girl are you a prayer warrior you know and don't be saying that if you're not and so I've challenged myself to really really try to strive to be a prayer warrior do I ever think that I'll actually be a warrior no but I always want to be striving for that I want to to try to be getting to that and I'm um, not just sitting back and saying yeah I'm good and saying yeah I'll pray for you okay you know sending up prayers so um, I got back into the Bible when I got to thinking about prayer warrior and I looked up the word prayer and I looked up warrior and things like that and then I said let me see what the Bible says about prayer and one that one um, chapter that came to my mind because we're in James we haven't gotten there on Wednesday nights but we're in James so I have that marked in my Bible um, James is written by James hmm imagine that and James was the half-brother of Jesus and he did not believe Jesus was the Son of God um, until after Jesus was resurrected uh, and I, I can I guess I can kind of sympathize with that or empathize with that or relate to it because I can only imagine somebody telling me that one of my siblings was this um, a sibling of God and how I'll be like what no that's my little sister or no that's just my little brother or my big brother you know no 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 so I could see how there would be some doubt you know but once he was resurrected James realized he was wrong and he realized he is the Son of God and he began and spent the rest of his days stressing that and, and in a very diligent manner and extremely avid toward it um, to get that out there I'm sure some you know because he felt bad and guilty because he hadn't believed before so his book is really really good to read James very good to read that's just giving you a little background on him we haven't gotten here on Wednesday nights yet but it's one about prayer and it's short so I thought I would read it with y'all and talk about some things I looked up today it says the healing power of prayer is anyone among you in trouble let them pray is anyone happy let them sing songs of praise is anyone among you sick let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer offered in faith that's an important word the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well the Lord will raise them up if they have sinned they will be forgiven therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed the prayer of a righteous person another very important word is powerful and effective Elijah was a human being even as we are he prayed earnestly another very important word to me that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years again he prayed and the heavens gave rain and the earth produced its crops and so I read that this morning because there it was right there in James about prayer and it said the healing power of prayer and I, I looked up some words and I'm gonna share that with y'all I took pictures when I looked them up and this is how I do y'all were many of you want to know what I'm doing this is what I was doing this morning <laughs> before I came on here with y'all the first one is the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well so I looked up the word faith and y'all give me just a second all right come here faith come here faith okay what is the true meaning of faith faith means belief firm persuasion assurance firm conviction um, faith is confidence in what we hope for and the assurance that the Lord is working even though we cannot see it faith knows that no matter what the situation in our lives or someone else's lives that the Lord is working in it that is faith and I thought Amy do you have full faith in everything that you pray about girl so I really reflected on myself about faith um, and so then the next word that I re that really popped out to me reading this was um, 
The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Let me see. I did look up righteous as well. Takes me a minute to get back. Here we go. Morally right or justifiable. Virtuous. There are many other words that mean righteous. Good, virtuous, upright, upstanding, worthy. Ugh. That makes me think, oh my goodness, am I worthy? You know, am I pray what I'm praying for? Am I worthy for what I'm praying for? So again, I self reflected on myself um, sinless, blameless. You know, these are these are powerful words, powerful words that, that I can look at myself back on myself and strive for. Um, let's see. Then the the third word that was very important to me here, talking about Elijah, he was a human being like us, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it didn't for three and a half years. And I looked up earnestly, and it says, with sincere and intense conviction, seriously. And I also looked up words, seriously gravely soberly sincerely intently firmly fervently warmly eagerly these are these are very powerful words in themselves aren't they so it really made me reflect back on myself and i'm challenging myself that instead of if i ever say you're in my prayers i'm keeping you there and i used to do this years ago when i've gotten crazy busy but in the morning i also had a notebook and i still do with my bible but i would actually write my prayers out and who i was praying for while i was praying and what i was praying for for them so i wouldn't just be lying basically having good intentions but lying saying oh yeah you're in my prayer sending prayers up sure you know so i used to do that so i'm challenging myself to go back and start writing my prayers back down in my notebook as i'm praying them to god and always and every day i pray for god to please forgive me of my sins i know y'all y'all hear john say that in our blessing uh prayer at night when he's here to pray over our food with y'all but um because every day we may have offended someone that we're not even aware of you know sometimes we do things that we're not even aware we did and so we pray every day and we are human and so we do continue to sin and to fall short of god's glory so that's what i'm doing y'all just wanted to know that's my little thing i'm doing and a lot of you have asked about this bible as well and then i'm gonna get off here i'm not gonna keep on and keep on i gotta go do all my stuff too um mary beth my friend mary beth she's also a doctor veterinarian that i worked for for years she got me this bible some years back it's the niv version it's a hallman rainbow study bible h-o-l-m-a-n rainbow study bible and the reason why it's a rainbow is because or why they use that word at the very bottom it's got it's got all your words highlighted in different colors and then at the bottom it tells you what these words are highlighted for for instance discipleship is sort of an orangey color outreach is a pink um god everything's written in purple that's god talking and i love that yes i do i know y'all i know y'all know that right salvation is written in blue love is in a darker green and a lighter green is all the commandments anything that has to do with the commandments family is in a yellow faith is in a a tannish orange not quite as orange as discipleship prophecy is in a yellow mustardy kind of yellow green evil is in a deep brown sin is in gray and um history is in a lighter gray so it kind of it, it helps you to understand a little more about where that's coming from or what it refers to and so i love this little bible it has meant so much to me since mary beth gave it to me goodness and it's probably been five or six years ago and it's turquoise and i've got it in this turquoise um 
Bible cover I got for it to protect it. I had one as a little girl, just a white Bible. Can y'all imagine a little kid having a white Bible? Ugh. And it's so dirty, bless its heart, but it's still my favorite Bible.